All right, Professor Guy, uh, I, I, I guess let's start. Uh, really, uh, we are really appreciative on behalf of SHA, very appreciative of you taking the time to come to, to speak with us today and share the your pleasure experience. Is mine. The pleasure awesome. is mine and uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. As I said previously, uh, I am usually, uh, I used to be the one who was from the other side, the hearing from the tips uh mm -hmm. from different prof hr professionals uh which is not a long time ago to be honest and now uh i have uh, the pleasure to be the one who will help the people here to learn more about the market how to join and how to kick starting uh, their careers and i'm very happy and looking forward for your questions and uh, your insights Yes, yes. It's mostly like a discussion. I prefer. I, 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 there are some questions, of course, but I prefer to to take on from what you say. And I'm going to use this now and say, from from when you were in their place to 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 where you are today, what advice did you share and implemented in order to uh, to come to this place today? Actually, I have uh, heard a lot of advices uh, during my career. Uh, one of the most important and uh, let's say uh, wide, uh, very common is when you are searching for a job, you have to be first of all patient and persistent, very persistent. Because, okay, you join uh, one uh, firm or one company and then you evolve on it. Uh, you can see and explore different sectors. The most difficult part from my point of view is to join the industry. Because many people are uh, graduating from schools and uh, they are trying to find something. And it's not that easy because uh, the demand is very high and the supply for junior position usually uh, is very low. So you have to differentiate yourself a lot. And it's not about only your, uh, your master's degree or uh, your uh, postgraduate degree. It's about a lot uh, of things. It's about let's say, uh, joining many seminars, uh, uh, joining some, uh, if you want to uh, work on tech uh, industry, uh, to follow some uh, coding schools or uh, coding seminars that will help you understand more in depth the technologies and decide on what technology you would like to work. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, networking. Uh, which is the main advice uh, you will always uh, hear from most of the recruiters and not only the recruiters, the business uh, people. If you don't network, it will be very difficult uh, to find not uh, any uh, random position, let's say. I would say the position that you will truly like and the company that will reflect your true uh, values, uh, that will re reflect uh, the domains you are really interested in working with, and so on. So the main uh, uh, thing I would like to pinpoint is the networking. Mm. Uh, networking is, uh, I, I don't know, when I was like at the beginning of my career it was a bit vague like what is networking what does it look like and i never liked this hand the faint handshakes you know uh, let's go around events let's shake some hands and i was treating it like that how was your experience at the early uh, at the at the beginning of your career how 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 did did you network okay this uh, started from an early stage at uh, my postgraduate post degree, mm -hmm. uh, which from some point I, I started to have a, let's say, a life crisis about my career on, okay, uh, I will soon end with my uh, uh, studies and how I will get to the industry, what I will, uh, on what 
I will work, uh, which sector is the most ideal for me. Uh, so I started to search by myself how I could start having uh, talks with uh, relevant people. I also had the luck to meet uh, out of the blue people in the business who gave me the opportunity uh, to start an internship, to join a seminar, uh, to help me uh, being in contact with other people uh, in companies. So uh, as a first step, uh, I joined a lot of uh, uh, seminars associated with uh, uh, job, uh, with um, presentations about uh, companies' identities, on how they work, uh, what kind of jobs they are looking for, uh, a lot of HR-related issues, which were always my interest. Uh, interest. Uh, then I started to apply for internship programs and junior positions, not uh, necessarily to take a job, but to have the opportunity to see how it's like to participate in an interview and get acquainted with people in, in the section uh, to, know, to get to know me better, to share my uh, plans about the future and my career aspirations. And of course, uh, to ask for their advice, which mm -hmm. is something that is really, it, is really appreciated regardless of the outcome of uh, the cycle of the recruitment cycle and the job application. Uh, these are some uh, basic, uh, let's say, uh, tactics I followed uh, those days. And yeah. How many? Is, uh, how many interviews would you, if you measured it, or a rough number, <laughs> like to get your first? A real job, not not your internship, like the, the first like real job. How 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 long did it take you to to go through this process? How many interviews? Uh, actually, it's not about uh, the interviews as a first step. It's about the okay. applications you made to be invited in an interview. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's go with that then. Okay. And I cannot uh, measure that because there, it it was there was very. Very much. I think for sure uh, 100 and above mm -hmm. to find my first uh, job. Actually, uh, I was about to start my first career step in my internship, but uh, uh, unfortunately, the role I was intended to work uh, didn't open for uh, budget reasons. So mm. uh, I was, yeah, I was forced to. Uh, search the, and learn the hard way from scratch to find something new. But it mm -hmm. helped me a lot and uh, it was very, uh, it was a very useful experience for me because uh, it actually helps you understand how the whole uh, process works and uh, gain something which is very uh, of paramount importance of you and helps you late in later stages in daily work situations you will face. Mm. All right. Uh, what, what would you suggest? You are in the tech industry. Uh, we all, I, I, I think it's common knowledge that the talent is scarce and it's very challenging. Uh, for companies to fulfill uh, their positions. Uh, what would you suggest the strategy to be for someone uh, who doesn't have experience in networking, in uh, getting uh, jobs like this, like for, for a truly entry-level person who hasn't done this uh, before? What would be the first steps? Uh, and we'll get to the CV. Uh, I'll leave the CV for a bit later. Uh, like, what are the steps? How how would you suggest that they look for jobs? What's the First process? Of, okay. First of all, uh, you have to search for the main resources that will help you find a job. There are plenty of uh, uh, 
uh, sites uh, and job boards you can check daily for uh, uh, ads uh, from different companies industries of course uh, you can always advise your university uh, in which, uh, which uh, posts and um, cooperates with different companies and of course uh, I would like, to, I would strongly recommend to uh, open a LinkedIn page and check regularly uh, for uh, new positions that uh, promote it. Except from that, uh, you can always uh, also search for, as I mentioned previously, for seminars and uh, uh, coding, uh, um, uh, coding uh, lessons that will help you. Uh, gain a main understanding and uh, help you find an internship and uh, network further with the domain. Mm. Uh, we have discovered in SHA, we, we are the coding bootcamp that does this. So yes, one thing, tick for all the participants. Great. I'm very glad for that. Uh, <laughs> also, I would like uh, to mention that um, uh, you can always uh, advise some, uh, ask for professionals their advice and uh, always keep in touch with different people on, on a frequent basis. It's not like, mm -hmm. okay, we spoke one time before six months and you're waiting <laughs> for the opportunity to be arrived. Uh, you have to really persist and keep active uh, your contact list uh, because there are lots of people who are trying simultaneously with you to find this opportunity and it mm. could be easily lost. So uh, it's something that I would strongly recommend because I have already lost opportunities uh, due to this factor. And that's it. <laughs> all right. All right. Excellent. Mohammed gives me a great suggestion, which I forgot to do, uh, and to ask you to introduce your career in tech. So, so give us a bit of your background. Uh, what what your uh, career in tech uh, looks like so far? Great. Actually, I'm in tech uh, from the last one and a half year. Previously, I was uh, I used to work in consulting. Mm -hmm. Uh, for uh, a big four company, uh, which is something totally different uh, from the sector now. Uh, my whole career, my whole my whole career is in HR. Uh, starting working uh, for a telecommunications company as an intern uh, for recruitment uh, department mainly for sales uh, section there. And afterwards, I used to work uh, for organizational design issues, uh, which are associated uh, uh, with the company um, structure, the compensation and benefits frameworks, uh, the training and the identification of trainings of uh, uh, the employees, and so on. Uh, when I was uh, at the consulting, I realized uh, at some point that uh, the section I was working didn't like me a lot. I, yeah. Uh, I, I would need... say, uh, listening to Big Four, I think you were saved. <laughs> I think tech, tech is so, so much better than the Big Four. Yeah. So, so I think it was a message. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, Actually... yes, not for you, tech is here. Yeah, actually, there are a lot of differences uh, between these sectors, and uh, the working model is uh, there are there are, it the differences are very big, and I I would say there are two different worlds. Mm. They have many similarities because I'm also working right now for a consulting firm, but it's an IT consulting firm instead of mm -hmm. a big four. Uh, so yeah, it was something totally different and. I needed to work in a role that is more oriented to communication, to help people, and it was always it was always uh, one aspiration to work in the talent acquisition section because 
uh, I like to recognize uh, the value and the talents each uh, individual hides and help him enter uh, the industry or find the next career step that will help him evolve further and achieve uh, her, his or her developmental needs. Uh, so entering the IT industry, uh, it helped me a lot, of course, my previous experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a holistic view about the IT, uh, mainly for HR processes and uh, large scale projects associated uh, with uh, HR transformation uh, issues. So uh, I didn't have uh, um, it doesn't mean that I didn't have any experience, but uh, in the IT sector and especially in talent acquisition, it was something new for me. So I had the chance to speak with a friend who was working in the company, uh, which uh, gave me the chance to pass an interview and then uh, join eventually Aries. So uh, I, I, would you like to tell us a bit about Aris Develas? Actually, Aris Dev. Of course, uh, Aris uh, Development Alas is a project-oriented company, as some one of you may already know. We have presence in uh, Greece from 2016, and our uh, group has been founded around 2002. Uh, we have offices uh, in different countries uh, with headquarters in Luxembourg. Right now, we have about uh, 16 entities uh, across Europe. And we are uh, actually uh, work with uh, companies uh, in Europe and uh, local companies. Uh, participating in large-scale uh, IT transformation projects. We cover mm -hmm. a variety of expertise, uh, including de uh, development, business analysis, project management, and uh, many more uh, for people to explore. Uh, actually, in terms of industries, so we are uh, assisting clients in, on different industries. If we can mm. say where we are currently investing uh, uh, strategically more is uh, 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 actually, yeah, financial services, telecommunications, energy market industry, and European institutions. All right. Uh, what are what is the stack you primarily work with? Do you have like specific stack or it's uh, we are uh, widely known for Java and Angular stacks, but uh, mm -hmm. we are also searching uh, for uh, very much for uh, .NET, C Sharp. Uh, uh, we are also searching uh, for big data engineers uh, lately. Um, Node.js, uh, many JavaScript frameworks. So uh, we have uh, a wide variety of uh, uh, roles we are offering. It looks like the Q&A makes my job so much easier and I'm going to <laughs> go with uh, Carlos question first, which is what about people without a college degree? Uh, like a self-taught developer, what, what, uh, how could he, how could a self-taught developer position himself uh, in order to, to get access to a position in your company? We are facing a lot uh, of people in uh, this phase in our career, and I have met uh, many people who have achieved in their careers uh, without a relevant IT degree. Uh, most of them self uh, yes. are self-taught, uh, followed a uh, uh, seminar or um, yeah, a social hacker <laughs> event. Coding boot camps, yes. Coding boot camp, yeah. <laughs> And after that, uh, they search for an internship or a first junior job uh, to, to, to learn more and uh, develop their skills. Uh, having the opportunity to achieve uh, not only senior positions and managerial ones. So it doesn't matter if you have a degree or not. If you have the relevant means and the relevant 
um, uh, motivation to learn uh, uh, text, uh, the, the text that you really like, uh, you can join any company you want. How, how can they express? I've heard this a lot from, from HR uh, people. How can they express their interest in the stack they are using? What, how, how can they do this without at the same time maybe look seem cocky or like that they focus too much on this thing and maybe not on something else that could be potentially needed in this case that they're applying to your company? How can they express their interest in the stack they use? What's the best way? The first uh, thing is to learn a lot uh, about the stack you are using, which uh, could be helped by uh, your your um, your studies. If not your studies, uh, you can learn it from the internet. Uh, we have access to many different uh, um, information. Uh, the sources, uh, there is a vast, uh, uh, there's a vast percentage of um, uh, information you can find. And also, uh, we, you can always approach directly to us before applying for a job to help you regard the tech stack or uh, give you the opportunity to communicate with a relevant tech person to provide you with his advice and his um, uh, and his, uh, let's say, um, consultation on the matter. But are you available for such a thing? Because if like 30 people reach out to you to ask a question, can you indeed provide value and follow up with each and every one of them? For sure not, but I can try to give them uh, a pace uh, on how to understand what it's best for them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, common true that in every first step, uh, career step, uh, you're not uh, sure on what you will work, work, work with. And uh, in case you are start to work with something, it doesn't uh, matter and it's not necessarily the thing that you would like. And I'm speaking from, uh, and I'm also speaking from, uh, from personal experiences uh, on this. So mm -hmm. uh, what I would advise is to search a lot, to come previously in communication with different people from seminars, from uh, networking events, uh, from friends that, uh, or uh, people you are know who are working in the sector to give you a guidance and then make a more targeted um, conversation with a recruiter because okay. it's something that will uh, make a candidate stand, stand out from the crowd mm -hmm. uh, to be more precise on what you would like to work with. Because okay, so, so what I'm I, hearing, I want to be yeah, I want to be a developer. But okay, yeah. you want to be a developer. What intricates you the most? You want more to be a developer, to be a business analyst, to be a developer who will work as a full stack or a, a back end, who will work with uh, applications or with data. Uh, there are many things to explore, and the most important is to be uh, aware of what you would like to work with. Mm. Okay, uh, I would like to say to the, the, our attendees today, we're going to answer every question. Uh, I'm, I'm going sometimes up the question, sometimes down, but every question will be answered. I just have a timeline inside my head of how I want the conversation to go. Uh, Georgios asks, what about the candidates uh, willing to make a, a U-turn in their careers and start with no professional experience in IT and, or computer science? Would you say the age of 40 is a major obstacle? What's your opinion on that? Okay, it's never too late to make a job, but the more you are getting older, the more difficult it will be and the more sacrifices it, it may need, it uh, may need by your side. Uh, usually the companies are planning such changes and giving the opportunity for an individual to shift 
on a different uh, section, uh, which I think it's very important to retain and upskill the uh, individual uh, because the career path is not something uh, which is set up with, okay, I become an analyst programmer, then I will become a senior, and then I will become an architect. No, it's not like that necessarily. And it's something that uh, it's always could be uh, discussed with uh, your HR and company in general. And if the specific company cannot um, uh, achieve, uh, achieve it or uh, take uh, uh, relevant actions, uh, you can you can do this on a different company, but I would say firstly to join another company on a, on a similar uh, role with the aspiration to make the move uh, mm -hmm. on the different uh, section because uh, the other companies will always say, okay, I know that you have this specific career path, you want to do something, then I will offer you something similar with uh, the job you are doing right now. And we will work together simultaneously with uh, the relevant um, position you are working uh, to make the shift uh, to, to the new role you would like to, to work. Uh, so uh, I think it's the most beneficial way for, for both sides to make such change. Uh, because in, uh, as an alternative, you have to, to make many sacrifices, as I said, uh, like uh, starting from scratch to learn something, uh, downgrade yourself in terms of uh, role, financial expectations, and uh, many more things. And for uh, my point of view, the, it's not uh, a good option, this one. Uh, it's about having a stability and uh, remaining on the same level while on a more, um, let's say, uh, stable way, uh, building your new skills. Mm. Uh, I'm going to ask the next question uh, from an anonymous attendee, which I don't think it's cool, by the way. Like, why? Why do you have to be anonymous? You might have your reasons, but I particularly don't like it that much. But I would like to bring to your attention, Xavier, uh, the context a bit, a bit of most of our uh, participants, which are juniors, early, like now learning coding, on their way to their first job. So, mm -hmm. so the context of the participants is, uh, is, is important. And the anonymous attendee asks, when we are looking for a job, how can we learn about the company's culture and values? Okay. Uh, actually, you can check uh, each company's site. Uh, in each site, it stated the company goals, ambitions, and the, the main values. The main values with which uh, works and um, operates. Uh, so uh, it's easily accessible for uh, the majority of uh, uh, people uh, here. And mm -hmm. you can also check, uh, for instance, our site uh, to see our values and how we are working. And uh, ask directly from people who work at company how we are working. It's something that we are... Uh, informing daily our candidates and uh, people because uh, it's uh, the most important from us uh, since uh, uh, each company is their people. So uh, mm -hmm. we have to promote our culture and how uh, we and in which values uh, we are investing in order someone to uh, choose right uh, the environment they would like. In your party. case, let, let me challenge you a bit, just for the <laughs> sake of, of the conversation. Uh, it's, uh, for example, I was trying to find you on social media, etc., and you were only on LinkedIn uh, as your business page, and there was little to, no, not no, there was little information, like very few posts, it wasn't very evident. 
uh, your culture. At least for me, from my side, doing research on your company, it was a bit challenging to understand your culture uh, and how things are. At the same time, and I'm not saying this applies to you, there are some other companies that their values page is, is really just a page that just, it has to be there because the marketer or HR in your case said so, but they don't really live, live, live by these values. How, how can you really understand when a company is not very open on social media and some other companies might not be living by their values? Is there a hack there? It's like, what, what can, can they actually do? To, to understand the cultures and the value, the culture and the values of the company. Actually, in this uh, in this question, I would like to mm -hmm. I would like to focus on uh, the fact that uh, having some values in uh, aside doesn't necessarily reflect the actual envir environment and the. Uh, uh, the interconnections in um, the company. So mm -hmm. uh, the best way to identify a company's culture is to speak with people who work there. Okay. And you will notice uh, how the most important thing, if they resemble, they reflect the uh, culture of the company or it's something different from what you, from what you see, and uh, there are lots of events who gave you the opportunity uh, to visit some um, companies and see the people who work there and hear many speeches from the people, from uh, professionals from different sections, mm -hmm. uh, which I think it's uh, one of uh, the most uh, easy ways to learn about a company's culture. Awesome. And, uh, also from seminars, as we said, <laughs> all yes, of these yeah. matters are covered because uh, companies yeah. uh, try to promote uh, their identity. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a car there's a scarcity for m many times for uh, junior positions, but the companies are planning in a more um, long term basis, and because we are know that. The people we are facing right now are the future seniors uh, professionals. Uh, we are trying to invest on them by giving by giving them the, the necessary information about us and let them select what's best for, for them. Of course. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Uh, Mohamed Tavali have answered. Uh, by the way, we have like 20, 24 minutes ahead of us. So if you have questions, now is the best time to uh, to put them in the Q&A, please. Uh, Mohamed Tavali have asked, hello, and thank you very much for your time. Uh, I would like to ask, what do you care the most in a fresh graduate as an HR, as an HR expert at first look? So what are the, what do you see that makes you give more time to this CV you have in front of you? Okay, nice question. Uh, I would say, uh, yeah, many things. I would say for sure his uh, willingness to learn more about uh, the company and to express uh, his real interest. Uh, if someone is excited about uh, what he's searching for, uh, and not seeing the job search uh, as an, uh, let's say, ordeal uh, and being de demotivated, like, mm -hmm. okay, I am taking uh, the 20th interview for today and I have no, <laughs> I have no, yeah, uh, motivation to do this and I'm not willing to uh, get acquainted with someone. Yeah, that will not help for sure. Uh, so I would say to be enthusiastic about uh, what he's doing, about the sector, to be informed about the, uh, about, uh, the market and provide me with uh, insights that will help me understand further uh, what career paths he would like to follow. 
which is the main point because we are here to consult and help him um, find the, the ideal first job. Uh, so if you don't express uh, on the right way what you would like uh, to work with and what excites you the most, then we cannot help, unfortunately. Allow me to add my personal experience here. After meeting, discussing with hundreds of recruiters in these almost six years now that I'm working with SHA, is that HR people are our friends. They are not, it's not the enemy that I have to yeah. do something or say something to manipulate, trick to get the job. HR people, first of all, are, it's, are great people because they love people to start with. So they are really there to help you with your uh, career. And sometimes they tell you no because they believe that this is not the right case for you. It's not about the money. It's about your fulfillment as a person, which exactly. will lead, it will lead to you get hired, but you have to be hired at the right company because the right company, especially as a junior developer, will give you the tools, will give you the patience required to an entry level person. You, you really need, you, you should be choosing. <laughs> it's not about exactly. the HR person. Actually, let me allow me to rephrase this. You have to co-choose each other. You, the the candidate, the company, and the company, the candidate. It it goes both ways. It's not a one side game. Yeah, I totally agree with you, and it's something that I always point to my uh, candidates that here we are not we are not here to assess you. We are here to make an open discussion on what would you like to achieve, and if I can uh, help you on that, because. Uh, I'm the person who will uh, speak with the management team, with the uh, relevant professionals that uh, will give him the opportunity to join. So uh, I'm not the bad guy, let's say. Uh, I'm the guy that will promote uh, each one of you. And it's something important to know. If someone doesn't do this and I, it's actually being called and assessing you like, okay, who you are, what you are done, do you have experience? And then you, it's not the right person to help you. And yes. it, will, it will say a lot, uh, this dance will say a lot about the culture of each company and the, its way of working. Thank you, Xavier. I, I want to, to mention that I, I'm really enjoying our conversation. Uh, Me too. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, really all your answers are spot on. I, I would like to uh, to bring a topic that you mentioned earlier about the financial expectations. Uh, what I have my my experience, at least from our student side, is that they are too afraid. I don't know if it's a cultural thing to discuss the financial expectations of the position of where is the best point for someone who who is junior and have hasn't had the, a hundred of these conversations in order to be experiencing. So how can he hack the system? When it's the right time to ask about money? Because we all, you know, mm. we all work for money. Uh, everybody in the company works for money. Uh, okay, we're all passionate about what we do, but also that's a big part of us working. So when would be the right time to ask? And what would be the best way, the most polite way or the more appropriate way, at least in your experience, for a junior person to, uh, to discuss this topic? Okay. First of all, there is no restriction on discussing uh, on financial expectations, regardless of level. Okay. It's something, from my point of view, that each one should discuss uh, from a first uh, contact point. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I think it's uh, our culture that doesn't uh, allow it. Uh, we think it's something bad. Uh, we think, that, okay, you speak about money, so you think about only about money. No, it's not like that. You can always express uh, your needs in a polite and professional way uh, without, of course, uh, talking a lot about it. Mostly according to, because you will be nervous if you are a junior person, 
uh, something that I'm, I'm facing on a daily basis, uh, mumbling, uh, yeah, you know, I, I thought about it and I believe that uh, the best way for me is to start a career that uh, will help me a lot and give me opportunities, okay. And the financial part uh, is very important for me. Okay, it's you don't have to do like this. It's about, okay, I have uh, make a market research. Uh, a special tip, Glassdoor is your best friend and many uh, surveys uh, that are uh, held from uh, consulting companies like Randstad, for instance. Uh, you can always check on them before uh, joining in an interview and uh, negotiating on a financial offer. Uh, to know, I would say not choosing a specific uh, salary. Uh, the most safe option is to uh, mention a range you can see yourself located. Uh, that will help also the recruiter uh, assess you and uh, locate you on it. Uh, based on your skill set, your potential. Um, so I would say, yeah, you can always um, uh, mm. you can always express it uh, on an interview. Uh, preferably after uh, during the last part of the interview, we usually uh, mentioned it uh, this time. Mm. If someone does not mention you, you can always ask it uh, as the stages are passing uh, because uh, it's something that uh, it's better to be precise and clear from uh, the first content point. Uh, yeah, to not waste anyone's time. Because, also, uh, also your time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. in order not to lose time and in order to have a trusted relationship with, between each other, we will really appreciate uh, these actions. Uh, not only from senior people, which are more, let's say, uh, used to these uh, um, procedures, but also for uh, from junior ones. And if you don't know your salary range, you can always ask us because we have the view from the market uh, to help them. Isn't this a bit though, like, like isn't your job to try to find someone like to to lowball him or isn't your uh, isn't isn't there a conflict of interest in in the exact number of of the, of the salary it, it, or you think it's you both have the same agenda here it depends on the yeah it depends on uh, which uh, yeah uh, no it depends actually because you, I'm not here to uh, say, okay, this salary doesn't reflect your skills, so we have to downgrade you in another salary. Uh, I don't uh, have this logic. Uh, mm -hmm. I would more say try to have a more generic view of uh, the individual needs, and I will try my best to fulfill them, uh, to fulfill it, because, uh, of course, it's not up to me the final, 100% uh, the final salary. Mm -hmm. uh, important to know that, but yeah. uh, I can um, I can be uh, the candidate's, uh, let's say, uh, advocate. advocate, yeah, right, and uh, help him uh, gain what he he's really, um, what he's really uh, gain actually the financial offer that uh, his skill set uh, works. Also, uh, Spiros is asking. Uh, let's let's. I, I'm trying to look at the time and let's let's try to be a bit more rapid fire. If 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 you are okay with that, okay. Uh, and Spiros says, "Thank you so much, Hesavi. Could you tell us what are some red flags for you?" And some green flags, maybe, uh, when an interviewee comes in. Okay. Uh, first one, uh, the stance of the candidate. If someone is like, I'm bored, uh, I'm bored, uh, I don't have uh, any motivation, any... Um, 
excitement to discuss and to share uh, my knowledge, then you are ready to face someone who will be rejected for sure. Uh, second, and secondly, uh, another one big red flag is uh, when you're trying to make some questions and someone interrupts you because they want to say something that they believe it's worth being said. No. Uh, it's something that we are facing uh, not only in junior profiles, we are facing from different uh, and from more senior professionals. Uh, this is a big red flag. Uh, it shows disrespect on uh, the other person who is tr actually trying to uh, obtain uh, its crucial information uh, from you. And actually, it's, uh, you are not allowing, allowing him to proceed to another question, which the, the, the other questions that will follow uh, will cover this matter you're trying to, to say with, uh, with passion uh, the, the, in their own timing. And it's uh, one of uh, the main communication traits we are assessing because if you have this uh, issue, uh, on your soft skills, uh, it will have a great impact on your daily workload and on your daily communications with teams, clients, and given the fact that we are, except uh, from the communication between uh, our co-workers, uh, because we are also a, a project-oriented uh, company, meaning facing daily clients and speaking uh, with clients uh, across all levels, uh, it's very important to, to be a good listener and a good speaker, not only a good speaker. I've, I've measured the times I wanted to interrupt you in this question. It was four. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I, would, I couldn't be hired based just on that. I could not be hired from you. And I just want to bring uh, people diagnosed with ADHD. They have this uh, agency to, to jump in uh, because we think we, we are giving value in this conversation. It's not mm -hmm. the reason to stop you, but I understand that uh, from, from your point of view, uh, I absolutely uh, see, see the point. Uh, Panagiotis asks, which skill or skills do you think are most actively sought by a potential employer and how can this be demonstrated throughout the interview process? Rather than being simply mentioned by a candidate as, as skills in a CV, for instance, like I am a good communicator and then I stop <laughs> everyone talking. Uh, you know, or like how, how, how do you assess this in, in, in the interview process? Uh, mainly from uh, a conversation, I would say, uh, asking some uh, questions about uh, covering soft skills uh, traits. Uh, one question I am always asking uh, to check someone who's how he's working on a theme is uh, what he believes or, or she believes is uh, the most important thing uh, for a um, team to work efficiently and how he contributes the, on a daily basis uh, to achieve uh, these expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, that will give me a, a broad view on how he is working on team and how, uh, how people-oriented he is or she. Uh, moreover, we are also asking behavioral uh, questions. What uh, would you do if that happens? If uh, someone, uh, one, uh, your manager comes and say, uh, okay, you will work uh, overtime this uh, weekend because we have this issue and we don't have any other resolution. Uh, we are asking like behavioral soft skills questions uh, of course, uh, the uh, conversation flow is always important because uh, it can show how people uh, communicate on a personal level, let's say, not uh, necessarily professional. Uh, as I said, we are usually uh, making conversation, not interviews, by my point of mm. view. Uh, 
uh, and if we match, it's okay. If we don't match, it's it's also okay. Uh, it's great. It's it's actually great because yes, you both save time and you can yeah. move on to the next place where and you, you know, are really you never valued. know. Uh, maybe it's not the time, the right timing, but we are always open to discuss again in the future. Uh, as you will gain more experiences, uh, change uh, uh, different uh, stacks, or uh, again in more personal traits, uh, the door is always open uh, by our side. Awesome. Thank you, Xavier. Uh, Guillaume says, hello, regarding the hiring phase, is the language barrier going to make it more difficult to get hired? In this case, uh, Guillaume is in Greece and only speaks English as a foreigner. So does this affect a lot in the hiring process, the fact that he cannot speak Greek? Uh, at, at least in your case, at least in your case. Okay. Uh, in the tech industry, this is not, uh, not a blog. Uh, you can always uh, use English language because it's our main uh, language uh, due to that we are a multicultural company. Uh, so there are there are lots of things that uh, people from abroad currently work for us, uh, and also many other companies who are uh, hiring also uh, foreign people. Uh, I would say the the most difficult cases are more traditional uh, companies like, uh, let's say, a big systemic bank, which uh, many people speak uh, Greek, or um, customer support associated for Greek clients. Uh, but that's not the the deal here uh, in the tech industry. Uh, most of the companies uh, not, uh, are speaking English, and I think it's obliged to, to speak English because mm -hmm. all of the applications and the the, uh, the the applications you are working with and the communications are in English. So uh, this doesn't uh, affect you by be accepted uh, from a company. Is, is language a, a challenge for you? Like, are, are you facing this challenge with candidates? That The fact that they cannot speak English, for example? Yeah, many times. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have the relevant exposure uh, as a nation to English uh, language. And many people are afraid to use it. Uh, we have to encourage people to work on it and um, speak more uh, with uh, stakeholders or participate on uh, projects uh, that are more uh, multicultural uh, oriented. Uh, so uh, yes, it's a barrier, but it's not something that you cannot learn. Everyone <laughs> learns some, some uh, in, a, in some say ways. Yeah. I say this to our students that it's an advantage sometimes that you only speak English because there are so many other countries out there who are not, and English is the primary language in tech companies, wherever they are in the world. Exactly. And no one started to speak fluently like he, he was working at <laughs> London five years, okay? <laughs> we are here to make mistakes, we are here to try again, and we are here to be... Uh, um, relax and uh, learn from that because, uh, okay, uh, we're not uh, based uh, in, a, in a company or a, a, a nation that speaks easily, uh, uh, English. And unfortunately, uh, many, many people are taking a degree on uh, young age and then leave it and not yeah. using it uh, at all. Uh, you can be good at writing, not, not good at speaking because you don't have the chance to speak. Okay. Uh, it's also not a barrier. Uh, the main concept is to take practice, to try to communicate, to um, go to your mirror and speak a lot if you don't have anyone to 
uh, to practice and you will be okay. What is more important for you, verbal or written? Both, I would say. Okay, equally. Both, I would say. Uh, yeah, oral uh, is very, uh, it's also very important for uh, uh, roles associated with, uh, with European projects because the main mm -hmm. uh, language is English. So you have to communicate on a daily basis uh, uh, with stakeholders uh, in this language. Uh, but it's something that you can, um, you, you you can uh, adapt to. It's not something crazy, let's say. Uh, the most, uh, the most uh, important, uh, the most, uh, the main challenge, let's say, is uh, to get out of your comfort zone to speak. Uh, I want to be respectful of your time. Can we maybe push it a, a few more minutes to answer these four questions, five that are here, and uh, wrap it up? In, of in, course, in five, uh, minutes. no worries. Uh, we can stay uh, longer if you want. I don't okay, have okay. any problem. All right. So we're stopping. Uh, we're not accepting any more questions. We're going to answer these five. So you have, have two questions. Let's go with the first one, which is, since we are talking about salaries before we, when we did that, uh, in case a person has no previous experience, would it sound nice or bad to ask for the basic salary? Okay. <laughs> and what is basic? Because basic, for example, Greek and basic developer Greek is different things. So I'm not sure. I, I assume he refers to the low, to the really basic salary. So how would that sound to you? Uh, I would recommend not to mention it because it's, uh, I think it's bad to, let's say, okay, I would like the basic uh, Salary, okay. Uh, maybe you you may be afraid of not taking the basic salary. That's not the case uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, First of all, so you have you you don't have to mention that. Uh, you have to mention what it's better for you and what will help you in this in this phase. Uh, so uh, I would uh, I would not like that and. Uh, when I hear that, uh, I feel pity, to be honest, uh, for the people uh, uh, in front of me because uh, they, they are not, uh, we are not here to downgrade them. We are here to help them and, of course, uh, offer them with the prerequisites we, we, sh we should offer and we are obliged to offer. Uh, so, in case, as I mentioned, if you want to discuss on salary, discuss on something uh, that gives you value, which could be okay as, uh, if taking into consideration the base salary, I would locate myself between these ranges. This would be a better option. Because you never mm -hmm. know and which ranges each company offers. And it's what, uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh no worries, and uh, you can uh, you can negotiate a lower price than uh, expected. The one that we are, I would than, say. yeah, than uh, the the company was intended to offer. In our case, for example, with noticing like we have some data on our side, and our students, junior level people, they start with twelve hundred, fourteen hundred where the basic salary, at least in Greece, is, is 700 euros. So that's already a big step up. Uh, so my suggestion, be realistic. Go for 2,000 and let's see, because <laughs> maybe maybe this will spark an interesting conversation between you and the recruiter. And then you go and you achieve the flow that Hrisavji mentioned earlier through you bringing your suggestion uh, on the table. So yeah, let's be unrealistic. And you know what? You might fail. That's okay. You take feedback. You need a series of interviews in order for you to love your job. So maybe the first one, you play with it and let's see where, where it takes us. And maybe this, this unrealistic question might not be the right fit for you, 
but Xavier will probably be a recruiter for many years ahead, let's say five years at least, 10 years. Maybe Xavier will remember you in her next company. And maybe if you reach out to her to congratulate her as you soon, uh, because you're networking with her, uh, then she might remember, oh, that crazy guy, let's see, let's see. And I'm sorry, not Xavier, any, you know, any other uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, George is asking, uh, is Aris still organizing the Angular Academy course? Right now, for the time being, no. Uh, we have stopped uh, this academy, but we are also reviewing uh, another in training initiatives uh, to help young graduates. Uh, because we are on uh, transformational uh, stage in this section. Uh, we have also uh, different sections uh, that are emerging right now uh, with multiple needs. So we want to cover also those. Um, the Angular Academy helped a lot and uh, many people achieved to uh, gain a uh, position in the company and evolve uh, further and uh, gain more senior positions. Uh, so it's uh, a very good lesson for us that will help us uh, design more uh, relevant academies in the future and discuss on potential uh, uh, cooperations to, to achieve that. Uh, Mohammed is asking, I was having a previous experience in using Oracle development tools, but he had a break. Is it okay to restart his career as a software solution architect? or mid-senior developer instead of starting over a junior developer over starting over as a junior developer it depends it, the, there it is, is no right question there is an, no right answer on this matter it's about how you feel it's about uh, okay uh, how much uh, how the duration of the break is it five years or is it six months if it's six months if you can, uh, from my experience, if you are starting to read uh, and catch up with the information uh, and, the and the daily workflow, uh, about two weeks, it will be okay uh, to adapt on a new role. If, I don't know if it could be mid senior or architect one, uh, it has uh, to do with a person and uh, his skill set. So, uh, what I'm usually asking if uh, I, I, I'm faced with this, uh, this kind of questions uh, is, okay, uh, let's uh, be clear on this. Uh, if you have two weeks, one month until you be hired to uh, adapt again on your own, uh, in which level you will feel more confident, not you will uh, be effective or uh, take over end-to-end uh, -end the whole project, uh, but you will feel confident. It's very important to be confident than to be anxious if you can manage uh, to, uh, to cover all the responsibilities of one role. And we can give you this time. It's not uh, a big deal, uh, this, uh, this issue. And of course, with the guidance and the help from uh, the relevant teams, uh, you can always adapt more easily than you uh, expecting. All right, then let's go to Akis, who's asking how different was the environment uh, in tech compared to the traditional, more corporate industry? I think this is from like the big four discussion mm -hmm. earlier. And how difficult was it to adapt to this new environment of tech for you? Okay, uh, both environments, uh, if we take the, the instance of uh, the big four company, uh, as a reference, uh, they have some. They have many things in common: uh, the project approaches, uh, the client management, and the client-oriented uh, culture. Uh, both of uh, these roles are very dynamic. Things are constantly changing. Uh, 
uh, you have to take multiple roles and uh, uh, cover responsibilities uh, that uh, you don't uh, actually have. Uh, so you have uh, to step out and uh, take over new things, uh, which helped me a lot uh, in the transition in the IT industry uh, and find it more easily to adapt on it. Uh, moreover, uh, as um, uh, in terms of uh, projects, uh, IT projects are uh, very complex. Uh, there are many roles to understand, uh, many roles uh, to cover uh, as a recruiter, and uh, I found myself uh, learning uh, new things uh, every day uh, in a different way, uh, in the contrary, with consulting, let's say, uh, because there are so many uh, sections you can learn in the IT uh, that, okay, you can say, I know all these things, I have uh, a holistic view about uh, the industry. No, you will never have a holistic view about the industry. Uh, even the most uh, senior person doesn't know anything about the tech industry. You, you can uh, always learn something new. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I like a lot uh, because in a more traditional company uh, or in another sector, sector you everything has, uh, let's say, a point that uh, you will gain the whole um, experience and the whole um, understanding of the matter. Uh, and okay, you will be like, I will, I will see something different. In the tech industry, in the, con in the contrary, uh, the width of uh, the information, the expertise, and the potentials uh, are uh, is why is more uh, is more upsized. So uh, you can uh, explore different things. Uh, you can start to work in the tech industry if you want to make a shift. And uh, as we mentioned previously, mainly for the older people, we, we, we didn't cover the younger people um, aspect, which I think it's more uh, uh, on target for, for this uh, speech. Uh, mm -hmm. You can uh, make uh, different career moves uh, in the tech industry. And it's something we are highly recommending. We are highly recommend uh, because it will help you uh, create a more um, multi-skilled profile, uh, which will be very beneficial for your uh, development. You will never get bored of what you are doing, and uh, you will have a, uh, an exceptional profile, uh, which will be more. Uh, precise on what uh, you want, what you would like to follow, and uh, uh, how to uh, guide people find uh, their uh, real uh, passion on it. Uh, so, yeah, I would say these are the main points about uh, the main differences I see. And of course, uh, I think the IT sector is more. Uh, open in communication, in uh, interconnections between uh, stakeholders, uh, people, um, and of course, networking. Uh, networking keeps coming back. It's all the time. It's it's coming and going and yeah. coming. Uh, uh, Ioannis it's the main asks, pillar. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I guess so. Uh, Ioannis, uh, you asked a question. We've already responded to that question. In case you missed it, you can go up, uh, go to our YouTube channel. Tomorrow, in maximum 24 hours, the video is going to be there. So you can rewatch the video and get your answer. Georgios asked for the last question. In case there is a noticeable delay on the meeting on, on behalf of the company, ex example, 30 minutes, without any notice, and the candidate waits in an empty virtual room. What do you think is the best way to react? 
show some interest, contact the company to learn if there's a problem, technical, etc. What was the best way? Uh, we are not, uh, as I said, as I also said previously, we are not here to assess you or uh, having you waiting in a um, room uh, for about 30 minutes, which is unprofessional uh, by uh, my point of view. In any case, if something emerges, uh, you you can you can always directly message us. Don't wait. Okay, you can wait five ten minutes. If five or ten minutes have passed and we have not get back to you, then it means something urgent has happened. So you can always direct communicate with us without having second thoughts or uh, being uh, uh, afraid of. Uh, okay. Uh, she will uh, feel, uh, she will be nervous, she will be mean to me because I spoke to her. No, we're not here about that, <laughs> about this, for this. Uh, we are here to, to communicate directly and uh, in case anything uh, happens, uh, to resolve this as soon as possible. So uh, speak for yourself, guys. And uh, uh, as we said, we are here to help you, not uh, assess you and be in hold a typical conversation with you. Before we wrap it up, is there something that you wanted to mention, but you didn't get the chance to, to mention? Not actually. What I would like to, what I would like to say as we end the speech is uh, to, for the majority of people who are trying to join the industry is that job searching is a full-time job uh, from my side. Uh, yes, so, sorry, let me, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat that? <laughs> uh, uh, it's that everyone should know that uh, searching for a job is a full-time equivalent job. Uh, and it's the main challenge that will help you understand how it's like to work uh, in a business environment. So this, these, all of these uh, recruitment processes that are uh, stressing you or frustrating you because they have many steps and uh, many questions and uh, stages to pass uh, are intended to give you um, a view of how it's like to work and how uh, it's like to, um, to persist uh, on uh, acquiring your, the ideal role and the best option for you. Because uh, to, let's be honest, uh, companies are very um, competitive right now and you'll have uh, to express yourself and uh, state what uh, differentiates you amongst hundreds and hundreds of people. So this takes a lot of practice and this takes a lot of patience and persistence. I insist on uh, persistence and patience uh, a lot. And uh, at the end of the day, another um, tip I would like to mention is uh, don't uh, don't see the interview as a an obligation you have to make. See it as a chance to get acquainted with another company. Forget the fact that you are searching for a job. You are actually desperately searching for a job, let's say, because uh, from uh, uh, at some points you will be very disappointed. I have been disappointed and many times I have faced uh, difficult and bad situations in uh, interviews. I felt bad that I could not compete to other candidates and I uh, let's say, um, downgrading myself a lot of times. Uh, no, you don't have to think like that. You have to think that, okay, I am doing this for the, for the best. I am searching for what um, I like. I'm searching for the position that I like, I really like and not because I have to find a job. And I'm trying to find a company that will reflect my values. And from the time I will step in in the morning 
from the time I will leave entirely this company, I will be happy. I don't think we could leave this conversation on a better note than, <laughs> than this, uh, uh I have so many questions. Uh, I would like, though, to, to share uh, some things that I kept from, from uh, your discussion. Patience, persistence, they are very high, very important. Networking, it's, it's an investment in yourself and you invest today and you will reap the benefits for many years to come. So it, it's, it's part of the full-time job that you have looking exactly. for a job. And not only at the start of your career, uh, for your whole career. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it becomes the most, easier, I yeah. guess. Yeah, the, most, the, 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 the majority of, change, of job changes and the, the new career steps are because of referrals or uh, networking with uh, people in the field. So don't, don't forget to network in any case because tomorrow, maybe the company you are in may not uh, meet uh, your needs. You may need something different, something that the current offer, uh, the company cannot offer you. Uh, you should be proactive and find different people, meet uh, different people to learn uh, the market and have alternatives uh, for any uh, potential career path you may follow. Javier, I want to acknowledge uh, all the effort uh, you gave to, to give us such great answers. And I uh, so want much. to wish you, on behalf of everyone here and our team in SHA, uh, the very, very best of luck in, in your career. And uh, I really like your positive attitude. I, 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 I bring, Please bring this more to the world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And in case you need any further clarifications by my side, you can directly reach me out from uh, LinkedIn. It will be really my pleasure to assist people here and have uh, a talk, uh, a more personal one-to-one -one talk with them. Uh, it's something that brings me joy and uh, make me happy for the job I'm, uh, I am uh, working right now. <laughs> And let's give them a challenge to find your LinkedIn in the first place, because with Chris Abhi, it's I think it's quite hard to to actually <laughs> search for you on LinkedIn. Yeah. But they, they, yeah, <laughs> you can yeah you can type <laughs> Nyoma because Chris Abhi is a little <laughs> bit difficult <laughs> to be pronounced and uh, right. Awesome! Thank you all to that and this. Thank you to Dimitar and the rest of SHA team for making this happen. I'm very appreciative to all of you. Have a lovely night, I guess. Thank you, Kusabji. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much.